Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm the Arrogant Madman and uh, this is uh, session two. Chill time, chill time with the Arrogant Madman. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I think today, uh, today, today's been going by pretty well. I had a really nice weekend um, hanging out with my uh, fiance. Um, <laughs> she now has a uh, kitten, if you can believe it. Yeah finally has a small cat now me I never been an animal person so you know that this story is gonna be particularly interesting and I, I think it, I think it deals with my upbringing uh, my parents they have had um, pets before in the house but mostly when I was a you know young I was a little kid kid you know so you know just thinking about it now I think um, uh, yeah, I, I think now I'm getting to a point where I'm like, okay, well, let's let's see how they are, how are pets. I mean, yes, you got to take care of them, and uh, I got to say, man, yeah, they were expensive to start to start off with the little kitten. Um, just buying, uh, I'll just go down the list. Well, I, we ended up spending about seventy dollars uh, on was it traditional thing? So it's like. Uh, litter um a litter box yeah litter litter box um food dry and uh wet cat food um a, a milk bottle because we have a kitten um what else did we buy we have a kitten so we have a milk bottle we also have to get formula so you know kitten formula and um toys we got some of the cheapest toys we can possibly find <laughs> like this little bouncy ball and uh this little fake mouse um that, you know that you can dangle in front of them um the scratching post which was like 15 dollars had little feather things dripping off of it um what else what else did we buy there oh yeah we had to get a collar for it so we got a little baby collar for it um <clears throat> now I'm trying to think of what else we bought, and uh, yeah, that was that was some of the main things that cost the most. We had to go to Petco because originally we was gonna just get a few things, like you know, the what we already said, but we were gonna just buy uh, like formula, like milk for the, the kitten. But for some reason Petco didn't have it, and they said, and the person who worked there was saying that a lot of their distributors weren't delivering. Um, that particular, you know, pet food or this pet food in general. I mean that excuse me the kitten formula in general So uh, we had to go to PetSmart and that's where we bought some of the other things we needed too. So um, To that part that's the beginning the, the cost which I didn't expect was gonna be that expensive But I do know cats dogs majority animals that are bigger than you know your hand are going to cost you a lot of money even ones your hand size are going to cost you a good amount depending on what they are um but yeah that was the first part the second part is that we got it now i guess i have to tell you the beginning of the story and the, the beginning the beginning of the story pretty much is that uh, my fiance's neighbors downstairs um had had this cat well these cats and the cats you know, uh, got together and they had these uh, kittens. And the weird thing is that, which is, you know, that's normal, but the weird part is that the neighbors downstairs uh, is, this, is, well, pretty much is this woman. She, she doesn't let the mom be with the kittens. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know what's her reason. I never asked her, but for some reason she won't let the, let the mom be, feed her kittens, which I don't know. I don't understand how that works, but okay. So the thing she did was around the apartment, in the front of the apartment, since they're downstairs on the first floor, they got like this kind of like mini, I call it like a, like a little mini porch area. And the woman downstairs pretty much placed these um, cardboard boxes to uh, like barricade these little kittens in near her door as you know, as when you exit out of the uh, apartment. Uh, and then the kittens are just there in a big group. It's like uh, four of them. I think four or six of them. I can't remember. I think it's four of them. And they're just all hanging out together in the front of the this apartment outside. They were not inside the house. They're outside. And um, I remember like my 
<laughs> my fiance's other neighbor who's like across the way from them was like really angry about this because the mama's supposed to be feeding you know the baby's milk but the mama can't because the mama is locked in the house so like my fiance was like really upset about this and the other woman who was across the way another neighbor was very upset about that too so my fiance was like i have to adopt it i need to take the catch so she nicely asked the lady downstairs for one of them because she actually wanted two but she knew that she couldn't afford it and i couldn't afford it. i can't afford it. i mean i could barely afford that one i don't i don't know how that's gonna work but we'll see um so yeah the lady was extremely nice and was actually giving away the kittens and i found out today she's gonna give them all to uh, uh one of those uh i forgot the name of it one of those you know animal protective services thing uh, aps or i don't know i'm just guessing that's pretty much what it might be called um so she's gonna give them away to uh to them uh, today so all the all the little cats brothers and sisters are gone so when we actually well I'll say backtrack when we were when we were there trying to find which kitten she wanted to take um she had her eyes on one that had like these kind of tiger stripe pattern which I thought was cool I didn't have any problem with it but the only problem was that the tiger stripe pattern one was kind of dirty apparently my fiance says she smelled like I think it was a girl it was a girl uh cat smell like poop or something so I guess she's been rubbing her nose or playing with poop or something I don't know and I'm just like well that's that's really gross and <laughs> so my fiance actually took a towel and wiped her off the little kitten off but she ended up um picking up another one which was a gray one a gray uh kitten and handed it to me and I, I liked it it was a little boy and uh i thought it was cute i didn't have any problems with it it didn't bite me or scratch me and it wasn't extremely playful it was just there and um my fiance decided to get the gray one so i was like okay cool so we actually got the gray one and the gray one's called um smoky so um yep so smoky we we spent the whole day with smoky playing with Smokey, uh, you know, playing with the scratch post and the toys, and he's really playful and really friendly, actually. Um, and I think the only reason why he's extremely friend friendly like that is because he uh, <laughs> he, he likes it, you know, like you know, cats. That apparently, I would say this: apparently, cats like it when you scratch the back of their neck, and so he like he purrs a lot, a, a lot, lot, like a ton. So I think he just likes all the extra attention that we give him, which is great. I don't, I don't mind that at all. I think that's really nice. Um, so it, it's really cute and it's, it's growing on me. I, I, I'm thinking that over time, um, that I'll, I'll be more, more used to pets now or more used to cats. I would say cats in this category first and, uh, won't be so kind of eh about them, you know, like I used to be. And uh, I think it's a, you know, important, what is a milestone type of, you know, mentality that, you know, maybe they're not as bad as I thought they were. They're, they're okay. So, um, when we got these uh, cats, I'm not sure why I do that. I mean cats. Well, we got these cats, excuse me. Um, we found that we ended up mixing some of uh, food with water, I and mean, water with milk, because we're trying to wean them off of milk but i think he might already be weaned but we're still giving him some milk with, with real food so we're mixing real food with milk to try to get him to eat now the only problem is that he apparently um likes the food we mix with milk and a uh, wet food he likes it but lately he hasn't been eating very much of it like he, he will lick it for a while and then he just be through with it so i was just wondering like uh you know is it something wrong is it you know you're not feeling well or something because he, he he's fine he plays and uh you know he just does this regular routine he sleeps and walks around and gets in places he's not supposed to be and now he does cat stuff so he seems fine but he just doesn't eat very much he has been using the litter box though which is good so i'm like that's good so that means he, he is passing food relatively easy so I'm like, I don't know, we, we might have to take him to the vet, but when I looked online, they said the thing you can do is try, uh, I found, yeah, one, one post said, if you try sardines, 
in tomato sauce. Yeah, I know. It, ugh. That just sounds... Ugh. Apparently, they love it. And I was like, okay, well, maybe we'll try that. So, I told my fiance about it. So, she might actually try it. If she remembers, she probably don't remember. But if she remembers, she will try to get sardines and tomato sauce for a uh, smoky. And see if that makes them happy. Because she is taking the food already with the milk in it. And the wet food. And try to heat it up a bit. Like a little bit. You know, to kind of keep it warm. And he's still not really eating it. So, hopefully, that might be the cure to the problem. Uh, you know, if he doesn't have any type of infection, like respiratory or nasal infection or something. Because um, the, the heated food is supposed to make him, you know, sniff it. And be like, oh, hey, heat food. Mmm, good. Because the, I don't know, the little website I was on, the forum was talking about how cats use their smell to get food or eat, mostly. So, um... I mean, we even try to feed them smaller portions because I read that too. They said smaller portions make them happier. So I was like, all right, smaller portions. So my fiance tried smaller portions, tried heating the food. So I'm just like, none of them really worked. Um, so we'll see. And I, oh, I even found out. I was just going to tell y'all right now. I even found out that apparently, um, cats sleep like 16 hours a day. I did not know that. And I was thinking like, oh, y'all just some of the, just the laziest things in the world, aren't you? <laughs> How can you sleep so long? I don't get it. It's like people in real life or like nowadays. It's like, how do you even sleep that long? I don't get it. Is that possible? <laughs> so, uh, so his sleeping habits are fine as long as he's still playful. But we'll see. We'll we'll try a few more days to a week. And see if the if that sardine and tomato sauce thing work, and uh, see if he has any more issues or problems. You know, something's wrong with him. Then we'll take him to the vet and see what what is bothering him. But that's pretty much what uh I've been going through a big chunk of the week, the weekend, and uh it's interesting experience. I'm like, okay, so I'm like, it 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 really was something different when um he hopped in my lap. Because uh, he starts liking me now. Because uh, he starts meowing at me now and licking my fingers. So I guess we're like buddies now. And, like He just want to get scratched. That's all. <laughs> I was thinking we try to start giving him treats more often. Maybe that would be like a way to get him to eat small amounts. Um, and make him happy too. Because we can make him a social cat. Like we read online. If you uh, play with him a lot now. Right? He's a kitten. And he'll be more prone to be more social as he gets older. So. We'll see how things go. I'll keep everyone updated on Smokey. I might try to put up a video of Smokey probably later on, either today or another day. Because I have I have a video of him about a minute. But the lighting's kind of dark, so you know, we'll see how things go. Um let's see how much guy got 30 32. It's not bad. But yeah, we'll see how things go. Uh hopefully it'll go well enough that um you know it's exactly what we need here. Uh, oh, food. Where you at? Come here. But, uh, yeah, hopefully it goes well. I'll, I'll definitely let everyone know how things are going with Smokey. Uh, in the meantime, I have actually, uh, been doing some fun things. Well, I, was, I think they're kind of fun. I've been doing some fun things, um, for school. And I think one of the main things I did that was fun was um, on Friday, me and this uh, our, my my group in my class I'm taking uh, called Single Cam and Nonlinear Nonlinear Editing. Um, we actually did a scene, the opening scene for uh, Pulp Fiction, and uh, it, we actually did it at a, a cafe Texan, you know where we're at right now. And uh, I gotta say. Uh, I really wish I studied more of the lines because it was a, a pain, absolute pain to try to remember all of the stuff they wanted me to remember uh, for the scene. And I was like, man, like I was hoping that I was like when I was doing it, I was like, well, you know, maybe I'll uh, get a, you know, get a little reasonable flow here, you know. But uh, I, I remember like parts, like big part chunks. But then I just I couldn't start. 
until the uh, female character had to uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, start the uh, initiate the conversation to trigger my memory um, which was okay until you know we had to do like multiple scenes from multiple angles which means we had to do it multiple times and so it, it is it's definitely a, uh, a interesting experience I would say um, when things like that happen because um, oh shoot, we're uneven now. Maybe one door is good. Yeah, one door is good. I like that. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's very interesting when you actually start getting in the film process to try to do something interesting and fun. You know, we're amateur. We're not, not a professional crew or anything like that. But it, it's really fun when you actually can see exactly how long it takes to do the scene. Like, we were there for, like, like four hours because we were having a lot of audio problems because the place we're in was really loud. Cafe Texan was loud. And on top of that, um, some of our chords weren't working correctly because we got the wrong chords from the uh, checkout room of our equipment room. And apparently everybody else checked out all the ones we needed. So we had to ask somebody for one of their chords uh, from their car that they were using, an uh, auxiliary chord. So, yeah. It was uh, definitely interesting. Now we just gotta edit it all, and uh, when it's all edited, I'll put it up on the channel. No matter like like I told my group, no matter how bad or good it looks or is, I'm definitely gonna put it on the channel. So, um, happy days about that. Uh, I mean, it, it was really cool though, cause uh, if you remember correctly, it's it is that scene where um, I can't remember that English actor's name. I think I think people know. I mean, like, if you seen uh, was it Reservoir Dogs? He's uh, Mr. Orange. He plays Mr. Orange, the one that's an undercover cop the entire time that no one knows, and uh, Mr. White becomes like best friends with. Uh, yeah, him, that English guy, uh, and uh, the other lady, which I don't I don't know what movie she's been in. I have no idea actually. She played a uh, what on the, on that movie? She played a, a character named uh, Honey Bunny. <laughs> I know, right? It's like funny, Honey Bunny. So it was cool. I can't wait to show everybody. You probably, I mean, at least get a good laugh out of it. I mean, <laughs> I think the best part of it is that we had this old, uh, <laughs> like a World war. I think no war, war, no a uh, Civil War rifle. I think it's a Colt forty five. I think, and uh, I had to slam it on the table. Uh, well, not like, like hard, not like hard slam, but like, I had to kind of like put it up on the table, like, you know, like, I'm like, all right, I'm ready to rob this place. Um, which is funny because we had to talk to the, uh, <laughs> the owner there or the man and the manager there and say, hey, we got this really old school rifle, I mean, rifle, um, uh, pistol. And, uh, <laughs> we're going to be slamming on the table, so don't shoot us or anything or call the police. So, <laughs> it, it was, it was, uh, it was really weird. I mean, just to be fair, I, like I remember the first scene, I couldn't even pull the stupid gun up on the table because um, the barrel was so long. So I remember like almost like knocking over all like, <laughs> you know how the restaurant counters have uh, like cream and sugar and ketchup and you know jelly in those like diner places. I almost knocked it off the table. It was funny, uh, but the scene it was great and. Uh, <laughs> I hope it comes out good after you know post production when we actually get it all together. I hope it looks okay, you know, it doesn't like look terrible or like extremely bad or anything like that. But you know, we'll see how things go after uh, we do all the editing for it. Um, but you know, we'll see. But uh, definitely an eye opening experience there, and uh, is and I think the main reason why we even picked the that scene. Is because it, it was the one that had the most dialogue in it, so that means a lot of talking actually helps kill time, because we needed like a five-minute uh, video, and we need something pretty quick. And and hey, that scene already had the script written out, but then he talks <sighs> like Quentin Tarantino wrote like the longest opening script in the world that was probably five minutes long, but like paragraphs and paragraphs of uh, information to go through. So, like, from the best of my ability, I think, <laughs> uh, I forgot, I didn't even talk about the other part. Um, when we actually came up with the idea to use it, um, I actually had to go home 
and sit there and look at the script and like cross out all the uh, like the bad words and the the racial slurs and rewrite them as something you know censored. I know every time I think about like censoring work, I think about uh, what is it, like snakes on a plane. Uh, you know uh, what I had it with these uh, Monday to Friday. I don't know, snakes on this. No, no, no. I, I had it with these freaking something snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. <laughs> like to, to be fair, I think I think the whole snakes on the plane movie is uh, the censor version is so much more funnier. I think I think everyone should watch it. Like get the cable version, the censor version of Snakes on the Plane, and I think you'll have a good time. But uh, it, it was interesting to have to sit there and kind of rewrite the entire thing. Um, hey, we got a nice little shack, a cute little shack. Um, but definitely interesting. I think I probably should. Probably should pr plant more birch because I don't normally really plant with birch. Um, bir plant. I don't really build with birch wood on here, but uh, I'm gonna do it now. But it was funny because I had to change like you know all the racial slurs and stuff, and it's, they still had the same meaning, and but it was still funny. Like I remember one of the words that I had to uh, <laughs> that I had to change wasn't even a, a, a wasn't even a curse cuss, cuss, ah, cuss word. It was um. Vietnamese and the funny thing about it is that at the time we was doing the uh, the filming which is like Friday a couple of days ago basically uh, I could not pronounce it and I remember when I was a kid I always had trouble pronouncing it and I have like a ton of Viet Vietnamese see look at me struggling Vietnamese, Vietnamese friends and I just couldn't pronounce it to save my life and now I'm like struggling but like my friends had to help me say Vietnamese and so in the in the scene, I actually say Chinese, and <laughs> because I was having so much trouble with it, and you know, you just kind of get kind of embarrassed when you can't say uh, anything, you know. And like, you know, I'm in my twenties now, and it's like I can't pronounce that word correctly, and then you just don't want your friends like giggling and laughing at you because you can't pronounce a certain word. Um, so I was like, no, I'm just gonna say Chinese, cause it, it, cause the character in that scene is pretty much, um, like, saying negative things about Asian people in general. So it's not even about their part particular group. He's just saying random uh, races. Just, I mean, yeah, random races because you know why not a random, you know, if, not ethnicities, but like, was it countries? Because, you know, it was, that was his way of uh, expressing himself during that part of the script. So I was like, well, technically it don't matter. So I just changed it to Chinese because I, I don't have that much of a trouble to pronounce it correctly. And I didn't want to offend people when I made it non-offendable in the script. And that would be the offensive part is that the main character can't even say the name of a race of people correctly. So... <laughs> So I, I just had to uh, say that that's like behind the foot behind the scenes footage that makes me like really laugh to think about it. Um, it makes me wonder how many other people have trouble pronouncing certain words that are actors. <laughs> like uh, wh wh what was that? Um, yeah, that's what it was. It was a uh, rush hour, and every time I see the, I think it was like rush hour two or is, I think it was two, and they had Chris Tucker say gefilter fish, gefilter fish or something like that. And I think I'm saying it wrong. Uh, and they kept they kept telling him how to say it correctly. And he kept struggling to say it because he was like, gefilte fish, gefilte fish. <laughs> and uh, it, it's like funny because that, that means it just showed me that, you know, hey, we don't know how to pronounce everything. And, we, you know, we're going to struggle uh, with basic pronunciations of things because, oh, shoot. What kind of wood is that? What kind of wood is this? This is... Oh, spruce, spruce wood. You normally find spruce wood normally in the. Uh... Did I use spruce wood for the floors? Oh no no no! I think I'm supposed to be using. Let me see. Put a hole here. This is yeah. I'm probably using oak wood for the floors, not spruce. But yeah, it's, it's like funny when I think about that. <laughs> oh man. But I think, let me see, that was the main few things that has been happening lately um, to me. 
I think something else interesting is that um, my fiance's mom's birthday is coming up. I think it's May 10th. And that's going to be the day I'll be going back home from, uh, you know, from school. I'll be going back home. So, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find something nice to buy for her. And I think I'm going to get her a cake too. Um, so that, that, I, I remember, why can I talk? <laughs> so th I think that will be, you know, incredibly fun, um, to celebrate a birthday, right? You know, getting out of, uh, uh, spring semester, even though I got to go back for summer, I got to go back for both halves of summer. I'm like, I'm not, I'm really not looking forward to it at all. I was really hoping I just do one half of summer, but now I got like two. So I'm just like, oh, <laughs> why? But, you know, hey, you do what you got to do because uh, I'm going to get out of here eventually. And this is the pa path of getting out. You're just going to have to accept it, you know. So that's cool. Like that. And do I have a bed? Yeah, I have a bed. And it seems like, uh, hey, our little shack is coming together pretty well. I kind of want to put another floor in it. Um, like, I notice that when I do play, I, I normally, like, make an elaborate house that's, like, you know, really big and neat looking and everything. But I think this time I kept it really basic. So the only thing I probably end up doing is making maybe making a second floor or an ex extension of this and putting a cool roof on top of it. But we'll see. I guess in the meantime, I can see if I can get some, um, what's that word, um, webs. I can make a fishing rod, hopefully. Yeah, I think I can make a fishing rod. Or do I need three? I think I might need three string, but yeah, we'll see. Do I have any food? I have an apple. That's good. Apple. Um, pick that food up. There we go. So, I want a nice little area where I can cook at and, um, was it smith? Not smit, um, what's that word? Smelt. Smelt things and, yeah, I think we're gonna have to significantly expand it. I think the thing I might do is actually make a house that are connected, but like are in different types. Like, I want to do something interesting and different this time. Like right now, this is extremely basic and like not very interesting, but I want to do something fun and cool looking as well as like very imaginative and uh, I think I might have an idea. Like I might actually have to take time out to sit down and write what I want to do. I write it down. I, I actually like doing that a lot. Writing down a design and then trying to actually put it together. I, I think it's really cool when you actually get that down. Um, but yeah, I think that would be a cool idea to do something like, like this. Even though I haven't told you, I have an idea about, about what I might want to do. Oh shoot, I don't have that much birch left. I didn't know that. So let's let's do that. I wanna do these stairs, like I'll show you. I wanna do these birch stairs. Um, like that. Cause I know I could have did oak, but I kinda wanna change it up a bit. So these little stairs, and the thing I'm gonna do here is that since this is what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight. So, one, two, three, four, right there, and yeah, and this, and that, and I want to do this, which is definitely going to be interesting, Um, because I'm pretty much going to build, oh shoot, that's not what I wanted to do, pretty much I'm trying to build, like, up, kind of, um, do I want to build up or do I want to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do that. I can do it like that. And then it could be like an extension of the side here. So let's extend the side like this. Like a bit. And we'll make this a separate room. See, it doesn't have to be that large of a room. We keep it simple. Yeah, I like that. And, uh,. Yeah, it should have the um, regular floor mentality, so it should look like it's, yeah, like that. And you should walk into the next part of this house. And I like that. I think that would be really cool to keep working on. But anyway, so I think that was like the main things that uh, were interesting to me that really talk about this time. 
Um, I think I might have, I'm, I think, <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to have more interesting things over time. Uh, no, I don't want to know anything about that. Banners? That's interesting. I never actually did a banner on this game before. Um, that seems fun. I think I might try banners out. But I think I should get like a good grip about what I want to do here. And, uh, yeah, make it extremely interesting. Uh, which is actually, it's coming together pretty well. So, I think the thing I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, end the episode here. I'm going to thank you for watching. Um, this is Session 2, Chill Time with the Arrogant Madman. Um, you're watching this on the two-way street. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.